When you buy a new MacBook, most often than not, all we get is a bunch of stock apps and all the Apple Silicon firepower, more so on the M1 and M2 chips. From there, the quest to customize and add our favorite apps begins. Whether you're a student, a creative professional, or looking to ensure your Mac stays healthy, I've got you covered. So buckle up and let's go for the ride. These apps are perfect for students or professionals who need to stay organized and on top of their work. Being a digital creator, I put a lot of research into my videos before you guys get to see the final outcome. And these are some of my favorite when it comes to organizing my workflow. To kick us off, we've got Notion, and this is the backbone of my production process. Besides being my main production machine, I also use it to write my weekly schedule for all my tasks, my content calendar where all my video ideas live, links where I save interesting articles, and most recently a mood board where I have a collection of pictures that fuel my passion for design. For instance, this is a page of my YouTube production schedule the last couple of weeks. And this isn't a sponsored message, it's just my own opinion, but for those looking to get digitally organized, this is the perfect app for taking notes and keeping track of your projects. It's highly customizable and you can create the perfect workspace for your needs. Now that we've had a glimpse of my workflow, the next thing is always adding beef to the skeleton and that's where my research app of choice comes in. Enter Google Chrome, the ultimate web browser and I know you're about to ask, what about Safari? In all honesty, even though I'm deeply invested in the Apple ecosystem, I find the Chrome user interface a lot more intuitive and easy to navigate compared to Safari, hence the reason why I use Google Chrome. It's made doing my research when writing my scripts a lot more fun and speaking of research, it gets even better as I can access the revolutionary chatbot ChatGPT through my Chrome browser. For those who haven't got wind of ChatGPT yet, it's a revolutionary artificial intelligence technology that is changing the way we communicate and interact with the world around us. Imagine being able to have a conversation with a machine that is so advanced it can understand and respond to you in a way that's so natural and intuitive. And to give it even more perspective, imagine meeting a person who's read every single book that's ever been written and whatever question you ask them, they've got an answer. That's ChatGPT. Moving along, after doing my research, the next obvious thing is writing my script and my go-to app is Microsoft Word. Probably not everyone's favorite, but I like how it's super easy to use and all the customizable options it's got. At this point, my workflow is growing and to make sure everything stays organized, I normally use Magnet. With Magnet, I'm able to customize how big I want the windows to snap and whatever layout suits me. In my case, I like to have three windows open and have my main window in the center and the secondary windows on either side. My personal preference being the 8x9 aspect ratio for all the three windows. All I gotta do is click on the app icon on the top menu of the screen and the drop down menu rolls out from which I can pick what part of the screen I want the windows to snap. For example, when writing my scripts, I'd have Microsoft Word in the middle, my browser on one end and any references I might need on the other. From there, my production line moves to the creative apps and I've got a few in my repertoire. Starting off with Audacity. I've been using Audacity to record my voiceovers and this was an absolute find and its user interface is so easy to use. Once your microphone is plugged into your computer, all you gotta do is just press record and your audio will start rolling. When it comes to editing your audio, it's also super easy. Simply select the area you want to remove and press delete. Once you're happy with your final recording, press export and that's exactly what I did with the audio you're listening to. From here, I usually move to the Adobe Creative Suite and I've got a few different apps for different purposes starting with Adobe Premiere Pro. Certainly not everyone's favorite, but it's been cutting it for me. Minus the occasional bugs, it's been smooth editing my YouTube videos and reels for my socials and in my reckoning, one of the easiest editing softwares to learn. Still on the creative train, after I'm done editing the video, the next thing would be creating the thumbnail and my go-to apps are Photoshop and Lightroom Classic. As most of you would attest, the thumbnail is the gateway to your video and one of the household apps when it comes to this is Photoshop. With just a few clicks, you can transform a boring photo into a masterpiece and it's not just retouching photos. You can also create digital ad among many other things. The only gripe I have with it is it can be overwhelming, especially for someone trying to learn it for the first time, but that's where Lightroom Classic comes comes in. Even though it doesn't have the customization ability of Photoshop, it does the job on your raw photos. Some of the benefits I've enjoyed are storing images on my computer, expanding storage without the monthly fees, working offline and also being able to create my own shortcuts to speed up my workflow. By this point in my production line, everything is done and all that is left is uploading the video for you guys to watch. 
I bet most of you have experienced your screens going off after a period of no activity and that's where this app with a very interesting name comes in. Amphetamine. I know right? Sounds like flu medication but tell you what, this was an absolute find. It's enabled me to keep my computer from going to sleep and this comes in handy when uploading my YouTube videos and as you know it can take a while especially if the video is long. It also comes in clutch when rendering projects and doing big data transfers between my laptop and M1 Mac Mini. Like mentioned earlier, it sounds like flu medication and its logo lives up to that. The beauty about it is you can change it from a pill to a coffee cup and how it works is when your Mac isn't active the cup is empty and to activate it I just click on the cup and it becomes full. I've also customized it to the tune of the app staying active as long as my Mac is active. In saying that you can set it to different time durations, I just prefer having it operate indefinitely. Moving on, the next app is Disk Drill. If you're a regular computer user, I'm sure you've experienced the agony of losing files and wondered how you'll ever recover your files. Well, you might have heard about it, but in case you haven't, Disk Drill is a data recovery utility that you can use on both Mac and Windows, but it was originally built for Mac up until the year 2015 when Windows versions came out. It's helped me recover my files from my hard disk, SSD, and USB flash drives with the help of a recovery vault. If you ever run into that problem again, check out Disk Drill. To finish off my final utility app on the list is Clean My Mac. This is like the computer hospital. It's enabled me to run my Mac with so much ease, thanks to its ability to solve most Mac issues. With Clean My Mac, I've been able to delete gigabytes of system junk, broken data and caches, find large and old files scattered across all folders, visualize my storage and find my largest space wasters, scan my Mac for latest viruses and adware, delete malware agents like keyloggers, spyware, etc, etc, clear out browsing history and tracking cookies, see real-time data about battery and processor load, monitor network and available memory, get personalized Mac cleanup tips and the list goes on and on. There you have it, my favorite Mac apps. Whether you're looking to stay productive, get creative, or make sure your Mac is running properly, these apps have got you covered. Let me know in the comment section which apps are your favorite. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share for more videos like this. People of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.